we're back, part two, or part dos for our Spanish watchers, um, of the daily rant on to the Raw Elimination Chamber match at No Way Out tonight, which will feature the champion John Cena versus Kane, Kofi Kingston, Rey Mysterio, Chris Jericho, and Mike Knox. Billy's odds-on favorite to win tonight, the world title, Mike Knox. Mike Knox. <laughs> That's my pick. <laughs> I uh, also picked the Lions in the Super Bowl. A couple of them were there. They bought tickets, so they got to go. So really, what do you, what do you think? Is Cena going to Cena walk out of here with the belt tonight? Is he going to walk out of the, uh, the key arena in Seattle, <laughs> Washington, with the belt? Statistically, no. But it's the WWE, so maybe, probably. But I'm going to go with launch, and I'm going to say it's going to be Kane over Mysterio. That's a good Final call. Final two. That's a good call. I'm going to go with Kane. Finally ends that long-running Rey Mysterio-Kane feud that we've all enjoyed so much over the past couple months. Um, yeah. Um, I'd like I'd like to see Kane win. It's it's time for him to have a world title run. Uh, run I think mm -hmm. he's getting towards the twilight of his career, and uh, I think it'd be good for him. He deserves. He's he's he worked hard. It. He's put his time in. He has. He's definitely put his time in. Isaac Yankum DDS. Yeah. You know, that, that's there's some some of those early '90s characters are kind of reminiscent of some of the ones they have now, like Kazarni. Would pl somebody please tell me? why on earth that he's even employed by the company. Not necessarily the fact that he's employed, but the fact that one of the fucking writers backstage actually said, hey, you know what would be a great idea if we had this guy named Kazarni and everything he said had like a Z in it? If he could like somehow work that into a storyline, <laughs> that would make for a great, interesting fucking character that we could put on SmackDown with the rest of the kitty shit. Like Jesse and Festus. Uh... John Malkovich there from Of Mice and Men, Festus, yeah. yeah that man was a good one. That's good, yeah. My fa I miss the Mexicools and the Wandeers. <laughs> I do like the Colon brothers. Yeah, Carlito yeah. and Primo are a cool <laughs> tag team, the Colon, yeah. The Colon brothers. The Colon brothers. We're here to Chris Clint. Morrison decided to call them. <laughs> I like that. So Kane, Kane takes the Raw Elimination Chamber tonight. That's... I'm, I'll go out and I'll, I'll, I'll put myself out there and I'll say, I'd like to see it. It'd be nice to see that turn out that way. That's the way I'm leaning to. Not Jericho. Kofi, I don't see them putting a the fucking world title on, on Kofi. No. What the? He's been an Intercontinental Champion. It wasn't he a tag champion, too? Yeah, him he, and uh, Punk. Punk. Him and CM Punk had the, the world tag titles there. But yeah, I don't see him. No. But they he obviously they don't value those tag titles or like fucking trinkets to them. Those things are garbage. They, they, they treat them like, I, I don't, they don't give the booking anymore. And they're coming out with, I love that, like the greatest tag teams, DVD, WWE, okay. yeah. It's like they just like dangle that carrot out in front of you like, this this is how good the tag team division used to be. <laughs> now we have great teams like Crime Time. Oh. I like Crime Time. I like their, I, like, I do like, I like Shad and JTG, but Shad pretty much sucks in the ring. He's, yeah, he's like horrible. you're saying, he's on the bubble. Dude. He is. He's on the bubble right now, whether they're just going to totally shit-can him. But that where does that leave JTG if they don't want to push him as a singles wrestler? Which the only reason Shad got called up in the first place is because of his tag, you know, the tag team. You, if you, I mean, you watch the matches, if you're a fan like we are, you watch... He's only in the ring for a short time. He gets the hot tag, he comes in, he cleans house, and then right back out to JTG to let him finish the match up because Shad can't be in the ring. That's why he wasn't in the Royal Rumble. They pulled the plug in the last minute having him go in the Rumble because they didn't want to put him out there like that, And which is surprising for WWE that they didn't just throw him out there and <laughs> make him look horrible because how many other fucking wrestlers have they done that to? Just put him out there and just made him look like garbage. The show ain't that long. <laughs> to go through that we way. don't have enough time to go through the shitty gimmicks. Like I one honestly comes to mind is chronic to me. I don't get That was WCW's fault though. No, it when they came over, oh, when they yeah. crossed over yeah, that was bad. and they had that they their gimmick was total I loved them in WCW. I don't care if anybody says Brian has Brian Clark are still one of my favorite tag teams of all time. I always wanted to see Chronic versus the APA. That would both at their prime. Yes. I think it would have been good. But and, going back 
Shad, I say Fire Shad, Fire JTG, Crime Time ain't gonna fit in with their new PG rating. No, no. Ship them over to TNA and let's see them go, went, go against LAX. That would be good. That would be good. Hernandez is such so much better uh, wrestler than Chad is though for a big man. Oh yeah. Jesus, he's good. I I never ceases to amaze me. As many pay per views and impacts I watched with LAX is that big man flying over the top rope like that. To me, I see it. It, it gets me out of my ass every time I see. It. See, I'm not being a mom. I'm kind. Of, I am kind of marking out here on this yeah. one. But I mean, the man's almost 300 pounds. He's built like a fucking Sherman tank, but. He'll just, he's got no problem oh, going over the top tank. rope. He's got no problem going over the top rope like he's fucking Juventud Guerrera. I mean, it's it's sweet. And yeah, I'd like to see a match between LAX and um, Crime Time. How much of a cliche is that match, though? There could be some riots in that one if that goes down. <laughs> oh my god, how much of a cliche is that match? Wow. Can the, and, and the promoters of TNA are all rednecks, too. What we're going to do is we're going to have us some black folks and we're going to get some Mexicans and we're just going to let them go at it. We're going to let the black and brown just go at it. Can you see Dixie Carter and Jim Carnett backstage and Jeff Jarrett? Can, I mean, that would... thats it, It's like a fucking clan meeting. <laughs> Let's just call it what it is. I mean... And I, <laughs> That's wrong. <laughs> Moving right along, congratulations to Al Snow and Cynthia Bobcat Lynch. They recently got married, and both of them are former hardcore WW, WWF, back then, hardcore champions. Uh, Cynthia, for those who don't know, Cynthia Bobcat Lynch won the hardcore title by pinning Crash Holly in the year 2000, which then she promptly lost 30 seconds later when Crash came to and repinned her. Imagine so, what will go on in that bedroom. Head. Two hardcore champions? That, that's some freaky ass shit right there. And his, and his gimmick was head? That's like a threesome every night. He's, I wonder if he does that for a with the head. I he, just, he I kicks just hope on, he lasts longer than her title reign. He, <laughs> he kicks on the fire starter, the prodigy. <laughs> comes in with help written on his, fore, his forehead, fucking upside down and backwards, shaking a fucking head. She's throwing garbage cans at him. <laughs> I wonder if that, that, like, how many hotel rooms they've trashed. Up you. Up you. All right. Last piece of business before we get out of here. Got a major announcement. The as you know, last year I did the WrestleMania giveaway. A uh, subscriber, a friend of mine, Willie RKO Willie, won a autographed picture of Chris Saban from the Motor Shit, uh, the Motor Shitty Machine Guns. Now uh, that's what I think of their tag team anyway. So. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, moving right along. You're not from Detroit if you if you grew up in Hale. Anyway, moving along. Um, gonna do it again this year. Uh, I'm gonna make it a little bit more difficult. I haven't quite come up with the correct formula to where make it still solvable, but yet not a wiki search away. So, more details to uh, follow on that. And what I'll be giving away this year, uh, I'm not sure yet, but it'll more than likely I'm gonna try. I'm leaning. Mick Foley is gonna be in Kalkaska where William and I met the Sandman last year at the MCPW show, uh, Battleground 3. So I'm going to try to get me a couple uh, Foley autographs and possibly give one of those away to you guys for uh, for the contest, or I've got all kinds of other shit I can give you too. So it's not shit right now, no, not really. I guess, you know, one man's trash, another man's treasure. I have a bunch of wrestling memorabilia I can give away. So until then, this has been Pete and Billy on the Daily Rant. I leave you with this. Peace, bitches. Have a good <laughs> evening. And enjoy the pay-per-view.